those pesky cavalier bosses. Yes, that's what we're gonna do in this video. Just go over some like tips, tricks, boss battles, and all that stuff. I popped a quick write up for it in the description down below if you wanna check that out. It just goes over what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. And as I'm well, talking about the various different champions, kind of methods and stuff like that that I use in order to, uh, to get through it. So the first quest is very much all about science. Using those science champions to kind of clear the content is the name of the game until you get to the end boss. Fall back to the Cavalier Cheat Sheet. Come out, I've changed some stuff, so I'm gonna to have to change the Cavalier Cheat Sheet. For version 4.0 will represent some of the changes that are indeed done. The Spider-Man's up as the first one. It's actually a very annoying boss and it requires you to think a lot more, which I think is the narrative that Caban want to do. If you've got bullet time and you've got Duke, those are things to remember. But I think the main problematic thing is bullet time with Spider-Man. Because the champion as well has an unblockable SP1, it does make sure that this kind of event or this kind of like fight is a little bit problematic. And you will end up having to do the following thing. You will have to do parries. And when you do a parry, it will come up with an evade charge. You'll have to literally do like parry, 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 parry. You won't get a stun, but you do parry, 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 parry. And then drop off. And then say go into your block. And as Spider-Man is going to do his heavy attack, then swipe back. This then means that you will trigger off bullet time to then go in that passive stun. You'll then be able to smack the heck out of the champion. And I would say that anything that does a lot of damage in a very quick frequency, like debuff champions, would be a good option. Omega Red might be actually a really cool um, counter for this. And I used Nick Fury in my second time and I had a better time doing it. Because the champion awakened his life model decoy, I felt that really kind of worked. Any champion works for this. Do bear in mind, because of the evade charges the champion gets, it means that it overrides the likes of using Falcon and as well using Venom, which if you don't have the true strike up, again becomes problematic and again is problematic against the fact of bullet time as a thing. You might take some SP1s because the champion power gains a little bit, but if you can balance it well enough to the point of using maybe a power control champion, but mainly doing lots of parries and then right at the last minute doing that evade. So go on the kind of the offensive to do loads of parries. So you get a longer time in the stun. The more evade charges the champion gets, the more stuns the champion gets. I think this is the most kind of like complicated one to explain first and foremost. But there you go. Um, I'll probably include some footage over the top of here. And I won't cover so much. It won't be a longer coverage of some of the other champions that uh, you go in the boss battles. It's just this one because it's a bit of a nuisance. Next up in 1.2, something to mention is this is all about using Mystics. I didn't think the Mystic node this time was actually that potent, that kind of like decent. But at least it's a, a means to kind of get you there by the end of it. I just think it didn't pop off as much as say the previous previous month. It just felt a bit different for some sort of reason. But in any case, let's talk about the boss. For this one, I decided to use Doctor Doom. And even though the champion does have buffed up, it doesn't matter that much because there is a node that's applicable. I also tried to use Hyperion, those two champions. i got to be honest, I felt that maybe that was the wrong step to use in this particular example. And Apocalypse, Source of Supreme, but also I think Falcon would have been some really good options. And we, they, those are options I plan to use a little bit more. I think this month is like, we've got a narrative that Falcon might be the, one of the go-to champions for this. So what does a champion have, like Hitmonkey? I'm not a massive fan of Hitmonkey. I think the SP1 is probably the easiest thing to rotate around. Doctor Doom is an example of, like, if you aren't having much fun with power controlling, to, to use him because he's able to suppress the power gaining from uh, Hitmonkey. If you don't like the specials of the champion. So that really kind of gives you an option. Again, buffed up, not to worry about why, because when the attacker throws a special attack, they gain a fury buff uh, for each full bar of power they had. So maybe kind of like just waiting to be Dr. Doom with the SP3 if you can and rotate around the SP1 if you are scared of the um, of, the, of the special attacks that Hitmonkey does. And while attack attacker has two or more fury buffs, the defender slowly accumulates power over time. Not something to worry about if you've got Dr. Doom because it can work towards a suppressing nature. Uh, and yeah, like it's important just to kind of maybe do more intercepts than anything, but as I said, Doctor Doom is an option that kind of saves you. Otherwise, some of the other suggestions that I had on screen to the left. I put Quake there, but it's like, it's a bit of an iffy one to kind of like choose that one, especially because it's class disadvantage. But a lot of people like Quaking nowadays, or Ghosting. But I think people like Quaking a bit more. Okay, next up is 2.1. 2.1 is really cool, but really odd. I think that's the really kind of the scheme of things with Cavalier difficulty. 
The node in particular that benefits you will be cos for Cosmics with uh, Cosmic Grit and Pumping Iron. The boss is Kingpin. Why is this weird? Well, this champion has power force and a power focus, power struggle, poison vulnerability, toxicant, toxican, and persistent pressure. Now, the way that you could either approach, approach this is either to suppress the likes of Unstoppable, or it could be a case of maximizing poison damage. It's a very kind of like weird line. And trying to find like a champion to fit all seasons is kind of a bit of a weird one. So for me, what I decided to do was just focus on the poison aspect. I brought in my team, uh, what you can see to the left. So Corvus, Hyperion for lane clearing, Angela as well. But also Apocalypse and Black Widow Clairvoyant. Black Widow Clairvoyant is able to rotate around and put plenty of poison on, which kind of creates an example of like a champion to use. And as well with the way that I play against Kingpin, it's the same I think a lot of players do. It's like push the champion to the SP1, back off a bit into the champion and throws it, because it will do that kind of like a very easy kind of um, swish up with a cane. So it's kind of easier to avoid, and that's what I was doing. I also was playing around when it used to get, when it would get unstoppable. And I'd say a good enough example to suppress that would be anything that throws a slow debuff, like uh, Dragon Man, like um, Sorcerer Supreme, like She-Hulk, but you don't want to do class disadvantage on that one. But I did also use Apocalypse. I felt that the um, throwing the poison with the rotation of the SP-1 helped out to put a lot more poisons on, but because you will do poisons in any case, it's just in case any champion really works. And maybe if you want to get away from the unstoppable side of things, then just have a champion that has a slow debuff or a champion that's able to deal with the unstoppable effect. So those are really your options. Keep to SP1, use poison champions at your own risk and as well the same thing with watch out for unstoppable and having its champions got a slow debuff, your choice. Now it brings us to 2.2. 2.2 again is like, it's kind of fun but at the same time it is very much tech orientated for path grinding. As a lot of you know, I like to uh, deal a lot of warlock based damage for this. Normally, I could say like, oh, do you know? Do I, should I use my my ghost? Nah, I'm kind of like I'm more chill to use a lot of like different types of tech champions, especially to kind of re-familiarize myself. But when it comes to the boss, who am I going to use? This was all about intercept game, and that's the thing that interested me the most: intercept and SP1 rotation. Two point one and two point two are probably the most easiest and straightforward when it comes to grind. Keep the champion to the SP1, and then it's a case of just like just throwing stuff around it and try not to push the champion to an SB2. Like, really try that. And champions as well that deal with Arc Overload, because that's annoying. So anything really will do that deals with heal block, in my opinion, and as well, just watch out for the point of just keeping active, because that's the thing as well. Brute Force is probably the thing that's going to get you. You can start taking a bit of damage. Champions of usage for this. I believe Mr. Fantastic was my go-to champion, as I recently ranked through that, unlike some of his, um, his pre-fight uh, abilities. Or the way that he can get like um, suppression and other stuff. I just found that it was kind of like it worked. Also with the extent of uh, what the champion gets from. I think there's some sort of like reflection of damage. Which is 100% of the damage dealt with the defender while they are stunned uh, and is dealt with the attacker. Now I want to try and name more against this. Not to say it will or won't work. I just kind of feel like because of the, the reflection armor. Or maybe even with uh, Colossus. It could be a good option to take on this as well. So maybe I recommend Colossus. For this particular interaction as well but most champions will really will do class advantage will give you some extra damage so that's really your options there and now on to 3.1 3.1 sees this all about skills and you've got skillful distraction so and also mix master for this and taking on the paths i normally have a shock champion or i have falcon two great champions to deal with this black Widow deadly origin is just sublime but anything that really deals with mix master is, uh, is normally good. Anything that plays into either throwing intercept or a shock, uh, incinerate and a shock. Check out the uh, Cavalier cheat sheet for more options of champions to take on the route. It's just the the go-to ones that I have. So the end the end boss for this is indeed Shang Chi. If I can find him, where are you, Shang Chi? He's there and has hard knock life. Has Bob and Weave. All defenders attackers are guaranteed critical hits. Not so much to worry about. And vital strikes when the defender strikes the attacker's block the defender regenerates 500 percent damage doubt not nice uh, now you see me every 10 seconds the attacker is inflicted with a fault debuff and then unstoppable toggle um buff which is annoying so what are the options to take on this with well 
The problem is, Volta is probably the most annoying thing. There are some champions that deal with it. In particular, Ebony Moore is the cheese option this month. But I had some good kind of like luck with playing against this champion with the likes of Archangel, although that's an iffy one, by the way, trying to get a parry and then heavy in, in the kind of the, the, the rate that needs to be applicable isn't exactly the best thing. For me personally, I was more interested in intercepting and actually did really well just kind of like just intercepting when I could, keeping the champion in SP1. He has a very avoidable SP1. It's just a up kick and then that's it. And then you can back in again. So you can literally just like fight, 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 fight. And then got the SP1, does the kick up. And you go back in again, fight for fight, fight for combo. And then if you can, I do it with special attack and rotate around that SP1. Better if you've got something that suppresses the unstoppable buff. And I would say then that again, that puts you into the lines of using Dragoman, Source of Supreme. Any slow debuff champion, in my opinion, will be good for that. It's not one of the best options, but it's like it's an easy option without you having to kind of like overthink the node and focus mainly on that. So try not to kind of like block so much, but also remember that uh, if you do a well-timed block, you're going to get hard knock life. So it's going to like just kind of like melt you away. So my kind of thoughts there is SP1 rotation and as well trying to suppress the unstoppable with the likes of Dragoman, Sorcerer Supreme, any champion that suppresses it uh, that has a slow debuff can be really effective. Yes, class disadvantage could work into this like She-Hulk. Uh, and you, if you have Silver Centurion, that's another option that does a slow debuff. But yeah, any slow debuff champion could really deal with this quite nicely. Okay, and next up there is an are some really kind of like cool champion interactions with going up against Mr. Negative. Now there's a great video by Unofficial Caban Mike. Link is in the description to that video that talks about various options. Now for doing the pass, first of all, seeing red and biohazard. Oh, God, Biohazard, this combination, is kind of annoying. So it does limit the champions you use. I would say get out of the way first. Apocalypse, especially from doing the bleed immunity and don't hit into people's blocks. Colossus can be helpful against that and various other champions as well. Iceman is the double immu triple immunity champion that could be very effective. But when it comes to the end boss, this is when things get uh, a lot of fun. And then you've got to make the decision about who you use against this. One of the great ones that Unofficial Caban Mike came up with was using Falcon, especially because there's inverted controls. I think that it puts more of like an emphasis on using Emma Frost, Professor X, Mr. Sinister. Those are some really kind of cool inverted controls or kind of like immunity to inverted controls type champions. However, though, there are a few others. Falcon, yes, can be cool against this. Blade with a villain synergy can be a cool option as well. That's what we've got in the left hand left hand corner. But also, I did try and use She-Hulk, which is relatively effective, but it can be very frustrating. So that is really to like watch out with that, especially with evasive maneuvers, which look, champions are going to evade. That's going to be annoying. Limber, it's going to be a little bit frustrating, but it doesn't feel that bad this time. But that's really it. It's the evasive maneuvers side of things and Footloose as well. So yes, champions that may deal with that situation could be better like uh, champions have the slow debuff. It seems like very much slow debuff seems to be like an emphasis here. Red Guardian could be used as well in this particular interaction, but I think for this, it may be best to kind of look at champions that deal with that side of things with the Footloose and the Unstoppable. As I said, there are plenty of options. It's just that inverted controls. It depends what, what you find to be more a pain. Either it's inverted controls or the Evade meets uh, unstoppable kind of combination and that is very much a case of going right we need to either go yeah archangel apocalypse falcon blade villain synergy root or you need to go inverted controls with your professor x mr sinister emma frost or you need to go a different route depending on what you want and how you want to deal with it and that has been the video i hope you enjoyed it please go and support unofficial goban mike and thank you for for kind of yeah watching and i'll see you all in another video check out some other content especially the marvel contest of champions news today find out why there's a new theory behind the new scarlet witch and where it could be coming into game as well as various other updates important updates for the community to know about so go and check that out up on screen now and i'll see you um in another video tomorrow Bye bye